Countdown Till Christmas is brought to you by Princess Grams. Personalized, magical, musical greetings from your favorite characters. Learn more and send one at princessgrams.com. Well, hello there. I'm so glad to see you again today. Are you excited to decorate, sing, and share another story together? I hope so. And why don't we start by finding out what is in our Advent calendar for today, December 11th. Oh, look! It's this gingerbread man, just like a cookie. Have you ever made cookies that look like this? I think they're very tasty. And why don't we find a nice place for him on our tree? How about here? Perfect. <laughs> well, all of this decorating has made me wonder about how the tradition of decorating Christmas trees began. And you might be surprised to find out that the very first tree that was decorated and used for celebrating Christmas was in Latvia over 500 years ago. In the capital city of Riga, there's a stone marker in the town square to remember the very first Christmas tree from 1510. That one was an outdoor tree for all of the people in the city to enjoy. Several years later in Germany, which is not far from Latvia, Martin Luther brought the first Christmas tree inside his house. This began the tradition of the Tannenbaum in German homes. More than 300 years after that, Queen Victoria first had one in her home in England. Her husband, Prince Albert, was German, and their family adopted the tradition. Soon after that, Christmas trees started to become popular in the United Kingdom and North America, and now you can find them all over the world. Do you have a Christmas tree in your home? Or do you do something else to celebrate? Well, another way Latvians celebrate is with the Yule log, which is a very old and lovely tradition. They roll the Yule log around the whole village or town and burn it in a bonfire as a symbol of destroying the bad things that happened during the old year and making way for the new that might be a custom a lot of people want to try this year. I bet you'd like to practice saying Merry Christmas in Latvian. Well, you say, Do you want to try that with me? Ziemas vatkus, vatkus, ziemas vatkus, prietsigus, ziemas vatkus. <laughs> Very nice. Well, Latvian children open their presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning, but there is a tradition that they might have to do before they can open them, and that is to recite a short poem or sing a song. And I think that's a great tradition. So why don't we sing another song right now to celebrate? And this one is all about Christmas trees. In German, it's called O Tannenbaum, and in English, we call it O Christmas Tree. Do you know this one? Because it was translated from another language, there are a lot of versions of the lyrics. And the ones that we're going to use today go like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Not only green when summer's here, but in the coldest time of year. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Well, why don't we sing the first part together? The words, 
repeat themselves. And so all you need to learn is, O oh Christmas tree, O oh Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. And sing that two times. Well, you might already know this, but thy is an older word for your. How lovely are your branches. And if you speak other languages, you might know that often words change based on whether something is formal or informal. Well, English used to be like this too. So if you used you, like how we would say, how are you? That was actually a more formal way of speaking. And thou was more casual. Well, if you weren't sure which to say, people usually chose you because it was considered more polite. And over time, eventually people started saying you almost all of the time. Well, again, the lyrics to that line are, O oh Christmas tree, O oh Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Why don't we try singing that two times? Ready? Mm-hmm. O oh, Christmas tree, O oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. O oh, Christmas tree, O oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Another time. O oh, Christmas tree, O oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. O oh, Christmas tree, O oh, Christmas tree, how lovely are thy branches. Oh, that was very nice. Thank you for singing it with me. And tomorrow we will learn the rest of the song. But for now... It's time for our story of the day. And today's story comes from a longer book called The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. If you like The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, I bet you'll like this book because it's by the same author, L. Frank Baum. Now, there are many different stories about Santa Claus, Christmas trees, and other traditions. This book tells a magical, fairy tale like version of these things. Today we're reading from chapter 12, which is called The First Christmas Tree. By this time, Klaus, that's Santa Claus, has been delivering toys for several years. When he first started, he took the toys to children who lived nearby, but each year he was able to visit more children in places farther away, too. Once, just as the reindeer were ready to start on their yearly trip, a fairy came to Klaus and told him of three children who lived beneath a rude tent of skins on a broad plain where there were no trees whatever. These poor babies were miserable and unhappy, for their parents were ignorant people who neglected them sadly. Klaus resolved to visit these children before he returned home, and during his ride, he picked up the bushy top of a pine tree, which the wind had broken off, and placed it in his sleigh. It was nearly morning when the deer stopped before the lonely tent of skins where the poor children lay asleep. Klaus at once planted the bit of pine tree in the sand and stuck many candles on the branches. Then he hung some of his prettiest toys on the tree, as well as several bags of candies. It did not take long to do all this, for Santa Claus works quickly. And when all was ready, he lighted the candles and, thrusting his head in at the opening of the tent, he shouted, Merry Christmas, little ones! With that, he leaped into his sleigh and was out of sight before the children, rubbing their eyes from sleep, could come out to see who had called them. You can imagine the wonder and joy of those little ones, who had never in their lives known a real pleasure before, when they saw the tree, sparkling with lights that shone brilliant in the gray dawn, and hung with toys enough to make them happy for years to come. They joined hands and danced around the tree, shouting and laughing, until they were obliged to pause for breath. And their parents also came out to look and wonder, 
and thereafter had more respect and consideration for their children since Santa Claus had honored them with such beautiful gifts. The idea of the Christmas tree pleased Klaus, and so the following year he carried many of them in his sleigh and set them up in the homes of the poor people who seldom saw trees and placed candles and toys on the branches. Of course, he could not carry enough trees in one load for all who wanted them. But in some homes, the fathers were able to get trees and have them all ready for Santa Claus when he arrived. And these, the good Klaus, always decorated as prettily as possible and hung with toys enough for all the children who came to see the tree lighted. These novel ideas and the generous manner in which they were carried out made the children long for that one night in the year when their friend Santa Claus should come visit them. And as such anticipation is very pleasant and comforting, the little ones gleaned much happiness by wondering what would happen when Santa Claus next arrived. Thus did this man through very goodness, conquer the hearts of all. And it is no wonder he was ever merry and gay, for there was no home in the wide world where he was not welcomed more royally than any king. Why don't we end our time together with another Christmas carol? And this one is called In the Bleak Midwinter. If you know it, why don't you sing with me? In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long, long ago, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him, give him? my heart. It was so nice to see you today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you'd like to follow along or read our stories on your own, you can find them and all of the illustrations collected in my book, Treasury of 10-Minute Christmas Tales. That's available through my website, ashleywagnerarts.com slash Christmas. And you can receive a free story when you sign up for my email list. Additionally, our stories are available as a podcast, which you can also find through my website, ashleywagnerarts.com slash Christmas. I'll link everything in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. That not only encourages me, it also makes a big difference to my channel and helps others find videos they would enjoy too. Wishing you a joyful season and a happy day. I'll see you tomorrow.